Hey there everybody. I just wanted to make a short video showing some folks how to create their own network attached storage setup through their server. So we're going to go through building out a Samba server. And I wanted to make this video because if you're like me and kind of look at the prices of hardware frequently, you know, the prices for for drives, for both NVMe drives, SSD drives, hard disk drives have just fallen, you know, an incredible amount. In here, if we look at these NVMe drives, you know, these are four terabyte NVMe drives. And for me, my server only supports Gen 3 anyway. Uh, the PCIe lanes are only Gen 3. I mean, you for $166, you can get a crucial four terabyte NVMe drive. That's crazy. That is a ridiculously low price. And depending on some other things, you could even get some of these lesser known brands, four terabytes, you know, 157, 149, 174. And if we swap over and look at the big boy drives, you know, spinner hard disk drives, 3.5 inch drives, some of these you can get, you know, 18, 16, 20 terabyte drives for under $200. And it's just absolutely crazy. Let's look at a 20 terabyte hard disk drive. It seems like the 20 terabyte and the 18 terabyte is where the price really kind of falls from what I've noticed you know, 18 terabytes you can get for, you know, $170, $180. And then the 20 terabytes, you know, are up in the $250. So you can save about $70 by just getting two less terabytes. But anyway, with the price of storage being so cheap, if you have a server up and running and you want to use that server as your own network attached storage device, which is what I do, I use it to store all of my YouTube videos and things like that. And I do that all on uh, SSDs at the moment, but I have a set of NVMEs that I'm going to put in. And then after I set up my videos for long-term storage, I go and put them all on, on a spinner, on spinner drives, just because you can get so much more storage out of it and for a very cheap price. So let's look at getting a Samba server all set up. And this Samba server will be accessible from Windows, from Linux, and I'll show you how to set up everything to get it all going. Let's get started with our Samba server. For that, we're gonna move over and we're going to SSH in. So here we are SSH'd into our server. Let's take a look at setting up Samba. For installing Samba, we're in a sudo apt update just to make sure we have the most recent information. We're in a sudo apt install Samba. To check if, if Samba got installed, you can type where is Samba and you'll, you'll see something that will look similar to this. Now for Samba, we need to set up a directory that allows it to share out. So we'll sudo make directory and then we'll start in our own home directory. And we'll just create a directory called Samba Share. So you can see that the Samba Share directory has been created. Now we need to modify the configuration file. And the configuration file for Samba can be found inside of Etsy, Samba, and smb.conf. And what you're gonna to wanna to do in here is just go all the way to the bottom
and you're going to paste this in. The only thing you'll need to do is just change the path to be your home username. And, and you can leave this exactly as it is. And I'll have this code in the video description. Save that out. Then we just need to restart the Samba server. If you have a firewall up, you can just do sudo ufw allow Samba and that'll update the rules. And then we need to set up a username and a password. So I'm gonna sudo smb password dash a john. I'm just gonna set up my username as John, uh, but the SMB PASSWD is the command for it. And now it's gonna ask me for a password. So I'm gonna put in 123123, 123123, and it's added a username John. With this done, now we can open up a new file explorer in Windows. We can go over here to network and click on the map network drive. And for me, this will be the X drive, but this is going to be backslash backslash 192.168.3.7 backslash Samba share and click connect using different credentials. And then I'm just gonna put John one, two, three, one, two, three, and hit remember my credentials. And you'll see, boom, I'm in. And here is my Samba share that is on my server, but now I'm connected through Windows. And just to test, Samba share, we're gonna CD into that drive, and then we're going to we're gonna create a file called test.txt. We'll just say that this is a test file, save it, and now you'll see in Windows the file is there. And we can open it with notepad. And here inside of Notepad, here's the file. It, it works exactly like we want. And so now my server is allowing me to use its hard drives on my computer. And I use this all the time because I don't want to connect a bunch of different drives to my computer. I want to connect drives to the server and have them available on the server and then when I want to set things up to use those server drives, I create a Samba share and share it out. So now that you have a Samba server, you might be asking, what are some things that I can do with it or what should I use it for? Well, this allows you to set a bunch of hard drives on your server and you can create a VM in Proxmox or ESXi that has a massive amount of hard drive space. Use that as your Samba server. And then effectively, if you wanna record YouTube videos, you can just configure OBS to point straight to recording your videos straight on your Samba server. That way you don't have to have a bunch of hard drives hooked up to your computer. Or some other things, if you are using Plex to store movies, when you rip movies, don't even bother putting them on your, on your own uh, computer. Just rip them straight to your Samba server out living on your server. And then the best part with Plex, you actually can mount that Samba server to your Plex server. 
And so your Plex server will have access to all those files and you can literally use that as your movie storage. And so in order to set up one of your Ubuntu servers to go and mount a Samba drive, let's take a look at how we can do that. So in order to connect a Samba drive from one server to a different server, let's exit out of here. Let's get into an entirely different server. This is my web server. And inside of here, we are going to nano into our fstab file. And you'll see that inside of here, I actually already am connecting to a Samba server. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect to another one. And my new Samba server is 192.168.3.7. And you need to know which directory you're connecting to. And for this one, it's Samba share. And the second piece is going to be where you want to put it inside of your current server. And this is typically done in the mount directory. So we're going to mount and we're going to call this one Samba share. The protocol, we're going to use SIFs and credentials. We're going to have equal to slash home slash John slash dot uh, we'll do samba dot smb and then we're going to use version 3 version 3 is the latest version of samba share it's a little bit faster we're going to do no perm and zero zero so when you Go ahead and save this into your fstab file. This means that it will automatically mount when you boot up your server. It's going to try to mount every single one of these things in your fstab file when the server boots up. So we're gonna save that. And so what we need to do is we need to sudo nano slash home slash John and then we need to create a Samba Dot .smb file. For those of you out there, because I already have a dot .smb file, that's why I'm creating a different file. Most people will probably just want to create a dot .smb file and you can do it straight in your home directory. So getting into this samba.smb file, all you need to do is put user equals and then john and then pass equals and then I had set my password for this to just be one, two, three, one, two, three. Exit out of that, save that. And then the last thing we're gonna need to do is install SIFS and SIFS utils. In order to install the SIFS utils, we're going to sudo apt get install SIFS utils. And I already had it installed, but if you did not have it installed, then you will need to install it. And with that, we have our FSTAB set up, which will ensure that our new hard drive is permanently mounted. And let's just check. If we go to CD mount, we see the NAS in there, but we don't see the Samba share. So in order to mount it without rebooting the computer, we can just do sudo mount a. And couldn't change directory to mount Samba share because no such file directory exists. So since we're in mount right now, we're in a sudo make directory Samba share. And now let's try sudo mount a again. Now let's take a look. Oh, our Samba share is now in. So let's CD over to that. 
And there's our test file. And there it is. It's all in there. And so this is how you can connect multiple Linux servers together so that you potentially have one big file sharing server where you may be storing videos or Plex videos, TV shows. You could use it as a backup drive so that you can back up your Windows files to it. And just with the price of hard drives and NVMe drives being so ridiculously cheap right now, it's a really good time to go ahead and if you wanna buy more storage, buy the storage, put it on your server, set up a simple Samba share, and if you're raiding drives together or whatnot, go ahead and give that Samba share terabytes and potentially many terabytes if you want, and then use that across a bunch of different computers and things. And if you want, you can have several Samba shares on different servers. So you could, for instance, have a Samba share that's running and storing all of your Plex videos. And then you can just have a Plex server that's basically empty that just reads off of that other Samba share. You could have a Samba share set up as just a backup so that it's got however many terabytes you want and it backs up computer, you know, Windows backup and things like that. You could have another Samba share that's set up just for video editing, things like that. So there's a lot of ways to use it and a Samba share is super easy to set up and it's kind of one of those things that at this moment in time with hard drives just being so ridiculously cheap, there's not even a good reason not to and if you already have a server and VMs and things like that up and running, you might as well set up a Samba share. One other interesting thing that I did quite a while ago was I had a Raspberry Pi that was running RetroPie. And I set up a Samba share to store all of my RetroPie games. And so it had all the file folders for the NES and the Super Nintendo it had all the file folders inside of that and the RetroPie literally just used those as if it was on the machine itself. And so I had it mounted and sim linked in and it just, I could use that RetroPie anywhere and it always had the same games on it and I didn't have to worry about having a big, uh, a big memory card or anything in the Raspberry Pi as well as the fact that I could have multiple retro pies on multiple TVs throughout the house and every single one of them had the same connection. And the really cool thing was I could save my games to it as well. And so with that, I could start playing Super Mario on one TV on one Raspberry Pi. I could save it, put it down, and I could go to another TV on a different Raspberry Pi and pick up from exactly where I left off. So there's tons of interesting things you can do with it. And a Samba share is such an easy way to go about it. So I hope this helps some people out and gives them the confidence to build out a Samba share, share it out and use it across your network. Thank you so much for watching my video. My channel is still young. So any likes, subscribes or comments always will help me out. I do appreciate everybody's time, and I know that everybody has a limited amount of time. So again, thank you so much, and I hope that you have a great day.